Hi, this is Brian Kim, and this will be the first of a series of cases I'm going to share with you that breaks down a double chop, cross chop, and all the mechanical fracturing that I do to break down, disassemble, and emulsify the lens. And today we'll be discussing the 2 to 3 plus nuclear sclerotic cataract. So I'll show you the case in its entirety, and then we'll go back and break it down in uh, slow motion. I lift the corneal incision with a chopper and then place the FACO tip, but I'm not initiating any irrigation until I'm in the eye. This helps reduce the risk for decimated detachment. I'm uh, aspirating the soft surface lens material before initiating the double chop. I'm placing the chopper out to the equator and then placing the FACO tip subincisionally. I'm placing the instruments fairly vertically, and then I place the chopper out contraincisionally, and this is the cross chop maneuver. Now, there are three pieces. Uh, I'm taking out the first quadrant and I am initiating uh, vacuum and ultrasound only to emulsify the lens. So as you can see, um, I am crushing the lens material between the chopper and the FACO tip. I'm placing the chopper out and performing another cross chop of this other quadrant, and you can see the mechanical fracturing by crushing the lens material between the instruments helps fracture the lens in half, and then I'm sandwiching the targeted lens material and then crushing it and then emulsifying it once the lens pieces are in bite-sized pieces. I'm going to prolapse this last piece out of the bag, and then I'm sandwiching the lens piece, crushing it, and then initiating vacuum and ultrasound in order to multiply the lens. So you can see the key is to be able to just direct the lens material between the two instruments. You're crushing, and then once you're crushing and you're getting the pieces small enough, and then I'm going to go ahead and emulsify the lens material. I'm pulsing the FACO tip and the uh, vacuum as I go. I'm spinning this last hemi-nucleus in front of me and placing the chopper out to the equator. But as you see, I'm going to place the FACO tip pretty deep in the capsular bag. As I crush the lens material, bringing the instruments together, it breaks up very nicely. And then I go ahead and uh, place the chopper out again and then crush another piece. When the bag is this empty, you could really use any approach, but I still like to use the same techniques because it just forms good habits. Again, you're placing the chopper out to the equator. You're placing the FACO tip deep. And this helps really uh, sandwich the lens material nicely and it crushes it completely. And then again, you continue to sandwich the lens pieces into small bite sized pieces, pulsing with the ultrasound and the vacuum to emulsify the lens material. This is the last quadrant. Again, you can see I'm directing the instruments very carefully between the lens material um, just to enable the vector forces to be the most efficient. Again, I'm directing the lens material again in between the instruments, crushing, pulsing, crushing, pulsing. And when you're emulsifying the last quadrant, you want to make sure you keep that chopper uh, deep in the capsular bag so the bag doesn't come forward. And you can continue to crush, but again, remember when you're crushing, you're not initiating vacuum or ultrasonic energy. And this helps reduce your risk of uh, breaking the bag. So when you're crushing, there's no action except irrigation after you crush and then you place the chopper deep and then you go ahead and uh, remove the, the uh, emulsify the lens material. Okay, so let's go back and do this a stepwise approach. First, I'm gonna lead with the chopper. I like to pronate my hand and uh, push down on the lens material as it glides across. I make sure it's under the anterior capsule when I do that. Once I'm out to the equator, I then supinate my hand. I'm placing the Fake tip just sub incisional, and I'm torquing my hand so it's more in a vertical position. So the chopper and the fake tip are both in a more vertical position. I bring the instruments together, and then it crushes the lens material in between it. Again, I pronate my hand, I'm gliding, and I'm pushing down on the lens to make sure I'm under the anterior capsule. I'm gliding out contra incisionally, and then I rotate and supinate in correct position, and I, I pull the chopper towards the FACO tip, and this initiates the cross chop maneuver. So again, double chop, cross chop, the key is to pronate the hand, that makes sure that you're gonna definitely be within the capsular bag so you don't actually catch the capsular bag. And I think this is a good habit by pronating the hand, this allows you to make sure that uh, you don't grab the capsular bag. So remember, each move begins with placing the chopper out to the equator and then uh, placing the FACO tip in between so that it crushes the lens material. It's very important to make sure the chopper and the FACO tip flank the lens material exactly. And this comes with experience. You make sure that you place the chopper again. I'm gonna place 
the chopper out to the equator. I'm going to place this phaco tip relatively deep in, in between. And then I'm just bringing the chopper towards the phaco tip. And you can see how easily it breaks. And again, that's because the forces are applied completely to the center of the lens. And this fractures the lens completely. And uh, again, you're emulsifying in between. If you place the phaco tip and chopper in a place that's not directly opposed, it will not fracture the lens completely. So this is a very important step. It's subtle, but it's an important part of how to fracture the lens with mechanical techniques. This is another important point. Don't ever get in the habit of grabbing pieces with a phaco tip. Go ahead and grab it and pull it into the middle with the chopper as you see here. With that piece, it would have been hard to grab with vacuum anyways because it's kind of behind you. And the chopper was naturally positioned to be able to pull that lens into the middle. But again, it's not a good habit of trying to grab pieces with vacuum because if you're grabbing stuff with high vacuum, you can grab the wrong thing, close your capsule. So as you see here, I am directing my phaco tip and chopper around the lens material, and then I'm crushing it and then making it smaller and then emulsifying and using vacuum in the process. So again, you see that crushing, breaking, pulsing, and again, not a lot of use of vacuum, not a lot of use of ultrasonic energy, and why? Because I'm using mechanical forces to break the pieces small enough so I don't have to use a lot of that. I'm then going to go ahead and rotate the hemonucleus in front of me, and then I'm going to place that chopper again, pronating my hand, sliding it under the uh, anterior capsule to make sure I don't snag it, and then I supinate it and have it in proper position. I'm going to go ahead and place the phaco tip deep in the capsular bag. This allows the forces to completely crush the densest part of the lens. And then I go ahead and perform the same maneuver by placing the chopper out to the equator again, and then bringing the chopper towards the center and crushing that piece again. I do initiate a little bit of vacuum to get that piece out of the bag. But then once I do, I turn off the vacuum. Once I direct the lens between the two instruments, I crush it. And then again, pulse with ultrasonic energy and vacuum. By using the ultrasonic energy and vacuum sparingly, I think it does enhance your safety. So again, I'm gonna take the finger tip and uh, chopper, crushing the lens material, crushing it and crushing it into smaller pieces. I initiate vacuum and ultrasound to emulsify the lens material. Again, I'm keeping the instruments, as you can tell in this verb, always in the central safe zone. I try not to go and fish for pieces uh, and by doing so, this has really reduced my uh, chances for complications. Again, I'm emulsifying the lens material here little by little. I'm taking my time. I'm emulsifying and pulsing as I go. And uh, you can see here for this last quadrant, it's the same maneuver again, pronating, making sure I'm under the anterior capsule, supinating to correct, correct position. Fake tip is deep. I'm using the fake tip to kind of guide where I'm actually going to crush. And then I'm going to grab this piece, bring the instruments together, crush the lens. I'm using a little bit of vacuum to redirect the lens at my tip, crush it again. And then I go ahead and keep crushing as I go. And then pulse ultrasonic energy and vacuum to, again, remove the lens material. Again, the pulsing of the ultrasonic energy and vacuum only occurs after I'm ready to emulsify the pieces. So most people would just go after this with vacuum. I don't, I don't agree. Go ahead and place the chopper, again, using irrigation only. I'm going around the lens material, and then I'm crushing it. Minimizing the use of ultrasonic energy in vacuum is inherently safer because those two things can cause problems. You can certainly go after these pieces with high vacuum, but why? Vacuum can cause a poster capsule rupture. And so if you can just use mechanical fracture forces to crush these last pieces and then um, emulsify them as you go, this is really a safer way. You're reducing ultrasonic energy, which protects the cornea. You're not using as much vacuum, which also protects the posterior capsule. So in this series, I'm going to continue to show different cases of highlighting mechanical fracturing and uh, showing the power of this technique. I hope this was helpful to you and thank you for your attention.